All right. Hello, everyone. It's your boy Simo here, back with some more of the Isle news. So, I have some pretty exciting stuff to show you. The Isle released their dev blog number 27, showing off some sneak peeks at the gore, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and some more dinosaurs like the Austroraptor. It is really one of the best dev blogs we've gotten so far. So we're gonna jump right into this exciting content, my friends. But before we do, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you guys enjoy these videos and wanna keep up to date on the aisle. All right, and now starting off the dev blog with Philippe, the lead programmer. Philippe says, this month I was partially working on the latest improvements for update five which we released on the 7th of July, with subsequent hotfixes and server performance tests. Meanwhile, we held a significant number of gore design meetings, which have already yielded favorable results, showcasing we have a good and solid plan to move forward with. Some core work for Update 6 had started a little earlier, but we can now focus solely on that. In other news, QA has received the first iteration of Night Vision, with feedback and adjustments already made. There are still a few technical adjustments to be made before we're able to release it into your hands. But back to Update 6. I don't have much that I'm able to share just yet, as the majority of it is code work. In short, we have big changes coming to the diet system, which is in the process of being expanded upon, with slot combinations, new negative and positive effects, the new migration system, adaptive diet lists, and more. Besides, of course, the bloody gore with organs, a lot of blood, new mechanic specifics for gore, and new corpse interactions will include changes to how scent works based on how old a corpse is, for example, or if it became a carcass or even rotten. Due to performance also being a constant concern, expect changes from what you see till the end. Everything is heavily work in progress. Here is a small example video to showcase some of what we've been working on. Please keep in mind that everything you see in this video is subject to change. Oh man, that was awesome. I am so happy to finally get a look at the upcoming gore system. I mean, you can pick out different organs inside that body, the lungs and the intestines. And if I'm not mistaken, it looks like the the organs and the bones themselves exist within inside the models. Because now let me know what you guys think in the comments, but I think we can see some ribs poking out of the uh, living Utah Raptor just in front of its legs there. Now, again, this stuff is very much work in progress and will be uh, fixed or these issues will be ironed out as they move forward in the coming weeks. But let me know what you guys think about that video down in the comments below. But moving on to our next aisle dev member here, uh, we have DM4, the programmer. And DM4 says here, as we were nearing the release of update 5, I was making smaller changes and bug fixes while being careful not to break anything in the last second. These included some improvements to walking in mud, footprint scent, schooling fish ripples, and foliage collision issues related to a plugin we're using. Before the update came out, I spent some time playing with our stress testers to get some normal player perspective on the game. I really enjoyed having parents to look after me, bring me food and all that. Unfortunately, my parents didn't usually survive until I entered adulthood, but it was a fun experience nonetheless. I hope you're also enjoying the update and taking care of your children. After that, I moved on to something that I'm sure many of you will find exciting, the Bipayasaurus. There are several new mechanics and movement changes for this dinosaur, so I had a lot to do. The creature is very buoyant, so swimming downwards will be a bit difficult, but you can ascend very quickly, which is especially useful when you're running out of air. 
It can also use its claws to latch to the ground underwater, which leads us to the next feature, foraging. In this state, you'll be able to detect animals living underground in the water, find them, and if you're lucky, you can dig them up for some free food. We still have quite a bit of work to do in both art and programming, but we'll be able to start testing soon. And here we get a look at some stills of the Bipeosaurus in action, a diving into the water, latching to the ground floor, and descending, and just sitting on top of the water surface. Some really cool stuff. I know a lot of people are very excited for this animal to come to the game, but let me know what you guys think of these new mechanics. The diving, the latching to the, to the, to the, the river bottom. Now, I'm personally interested to find out more about what these uh, critters might be that you'll be digging up on these river bottoms and lake bottoms, but moving on to Amarok, our next Isle Dev, who has been doing some streams as of late, which have been a joy to watch. I've been there for a couple of them. But Amarok here says, most of my month was spent working on the new net driver integration with Epic Online Services. This was required for a variety of reasons, especially easy anti-cheat. More recently, however, I have been able to shift focus from back-end services and devote my attention to upgrading the capabilities of our AI, to which I have been adding the Pterodactylus, a new type of scavenger, and getting the Carnotaurus back into the fray. Fish schools have also had a few changes, which include fish that now leap out of the water and leave small splashes. Unfortunately, this means the end of the flying fish bug. I know how much everyone loves them. Sorry. <laughs> Some improvements to Dinosaur AI have included the ability for them to seek out food and water, as well as randomize their skins. I have been exploring options for how AI spawning should change to better accommodate the diet system for lower population servers. This means you should always be able to find your perfect diet. I have also improved the rabbit burrowing and ambient animal interaction, which will be worked on more over the next month. Some of you would have seen my recent streams, which I just wanted to say I really enjoy doing, so thanks everyone for the support, and I appreciate all the comments and questions that come in. And if you guys are interested in finding out how you can watch these streams, they are regularly announced on the ILO official Discord, which I will include a link for down below in the description. But moving on to Siza, who is the Isle's official video editor. Uh, Siza here says the update release this month was also exciting for me because it also meant the release of what I've been working on for the last weeks and months, the trailer creation. As there were, again, many mechanics that should be explained in it, this trailer is the longest so far. Another reason for its unusual length is that it was supposed to be calm and relaxed. After all, it might be the last chance to present such an atmospheric trailer. So let's enjoy every second of peaceful scenes before the world gets darker. To illustrate the interaction of the different mechanics, my goal was to present each mechanic chronologically. First the skin system, then courting, nesting, hatching, and so on. To avoid it becoming boring, however, I have chosen a different species for each mechanic with smooth transitions between each. The last scene with the Carnotaurus attack and the hatchling Carnotaurus just seems like a cinematic, nice to have, but actually it has several functions. It closes the parentheses and opens the chance to show the actual possible in-game impact of the skin system. In addition, it demonstrates the ecological cycle that the new nesting mechanic brings. By the way, I read through a lot of feedback from you guys and I'm very happy how many of you liked the depiction of the Carnotaurus in this trailer. After the release of the trailer, I immediately started my next project. It's in a new format that many of you have been asking for. Which is interesting. Siza, you've been absolutely fantastic with the trailers, and we are all anxiously awaiting to see what you have for us next. Now, Wedge, the sound designer, has the shortest addition to the dev blog here. Wedge says, This month has mostly consisted of more work on Truidon sounds, with the majority of its sounds created and added to the engine, ready for me to spend some time playtesting to make sure it sounds fleshed out and balanced. Trudon now only lacks a few sounds for its adult stage, which, once complete, will have me moving on to a juvenile variant for each sound. I've also been working on creating some chorus sounds for groups of pterodactylus in varying group sizes and for different gameplay reasons. 
interesting stuff. We are all very much looking forward to the Truodon and seeing the Pterodactylus in the game. But that brings us now to probably the most exciting addition to this dev blog, Tapwing, the 2D artist, the concept artist. And first off, we're starting with the Therizinosaurus, which many of you might have already seen as it was shared on the Phase 2 portion of the Isle Official Discord. Uh, Tapwing here says, Despite the updated appearance adding extra floof, we very much wanted to keep Therizinosaurus's murder turkey reputation. One of the main goals was to see how many different ways we could use Theri's claws outside of just grabbing tree branches. Cutting obstructive foliage, raking large predators, impaling small ones, and exploring the potential for mutilation. Another aspect I'd like to see, if we can implement it, utilizing our Theri's famously fluffy tail, is a defensive feature, absorbing a set amount of damage from tail attacks, giving Theri another shot at escaping predators, trying to chase it down, or offering some protection to its hatchlings, from smaller creatures looking to steal one away as an easy snack. I especially like that idea of being able to protect little hatchlings under that tail of floof. I think that is a really cool and creative idea from Tapwing. Now, we move on to something that I have been waiting ages for. We finally get a look at the Tyrannosaurus Rex concept art. Tapwing here says, large and in charge. If there's one idea we wanted to sell with the Tyrannosaurus Rex, it's don't let it get its jaws on you. Its bite is a force to be reckoned with. In addition to that, we thought it might be time for an additional attack to help it single out targets. A side striking head swing to stagger or even knock over prey and bust open bothersome gates. You can bet there will be plenty of opportunities for mutilation with the Rex. This is an animal you won't want to get one on one against. Now we get a look at those aforementioned new abilities, the charging through the gates at those Utah Raptors, a bash up against the side of a Giga, but you can also see that the T-Rex here pins down a Parasaurolophus to deliver the killing blow. Same thing to what looks to be an Allosaurus, and then also looks like it grabs and takes down a Suchomimus. A lot of interesting attacks here in for the T-Rex. But the one that I like the most out of this is the look at the little baby hatchling Rex with its parent and then a human looking on quietly from behind a tree. I cannot wait for both the Tyrannosaurus Rex to make its final debut in Evrima as well as to get a chance to be that human hiding, hoping that the Tyrannosaurus Rex doesn't sniff you out. But guys... I know I'm a bit of a T-Rex fanboy, but let me know what you think of this concept art. Are you excited for the introduction of the Tyrannosaurus? What do you think of the concept art? Do you have any ideas for additional attacks the T-Rex could have? I am very interested to see how this all shakes down. But we do have other entries in the dev blog to get to, and I want to get to Jace, the level designer here. Uh, this is their very first entry. Um, Jace here says, after a little over a year of being on the team, this is actually my first dev blog entry. And funny enough, it's not even about level design. I'm here to talk about the design of the new Night Vision. Night Vision is actually one of the first things I took a crack at when I joined the team, working on it when I had the time. The Night Vision coming to Ivrim is quite different to the Night Vision of the past. In the past, the Night Vision had a large visual impact on your play experience, where under certain lighting, it was actually best to use flipping it on and, on and off, or just off entirely, because you could see better without it. The new night vision system was designed with the intent of being able to leave it on all the time if you wanted to, meaning that it couldn't negatively hinder your vision or detract from the look of the game, but has to allow players to see in the dark. To achieve these goals there were a few hurdles to get over, like designing it in a way to not modify any of the colors or values on the screen so that you could retain full color vision and contrast. But how could I improve your vision in the dark if I couldn't make it any brighter? Outlines. Inspired by the ENVGB, a newer night vision technology showed off by the US military, 
In game, this effect is done in a purely additive way to the scene where it will draw outlines around the edges of objects that exceed a certain distance from the object behind it. Then the intensity of those lines get masked to only the areas of the scene that are dark enough that the outlines prove beneficial to your vision. Then with a few extra details like fading it out around the edge of your screen and you get night vision that achieves these goals. This new system provides night vision that both retains all the color of the scene and allows you to see in the dark, but it will also dynamically change and adjust itself to fit the needs of what you're currently looking at. Very interesting stuff. I'll be sure to include uh, an example here of what this ENVGB night vision looks like so you guys can get an understanding. Now it won't look exactly like that. Um, we'll still be able to see uh, the colors and the uh, contrast uh, through those outlines, but those will be incorporated into our vision um, at night to help us uh, see more effectively. So very cool, Jace, and thank you very much for that awesome first entry into the dev vlogs. Very cool. Many thanks. Now, Jake, the 3D artist, Jacob Bardo, has a real treat for us. Jake here is going to be showing off the Raptor and Baryonyx models. Jake says, I'm finally making creatures again, short-lived as I will be back on miscellaneous environment assets and other goodies in the near future. But for now, I got to wrap up the technical work needed to make Raptor game ready, as well as wrap up the Baryonyx finally. Raptor just needed a nice... Ridopology? <laughs> Ridopology? I'm not familiar with that word. For feathered animals, this can be a bit of a hassle, as we need to account for the alpha cards, but thankfully Ostroraptor wasn't too bad on this front. Fewer than the Therizinosaurus. Baryonyx was next up to get his facelift, accommodating new ideas for how the creature will work in gameplay as well as bringing it into the aesthetic of the newer dinosaur assets. I hope you guys like how it turned out. And we sure do, Jake. I really do like the look of the Ostroraptor and the Baryonyx. Kissin was kind of holding on to the real nice screenshot, which I'll put up here now for you, of the Ostroraptor painted and finished looking, at least it seems on the surface. A very beautiful and colorful animal, which I cannot wait to have on the island of Isla Spiro in Evrima. But super cool stuff. But now we're gonna wrap up this dev blog with the producer, Kissin' Kitten. All right, now Kissin' Kitten is going to go into length on everything previously mentioned. So this is very detail heavy, be ready. Now, Kissin' Kitten says, as mentioned above, we're rounding out some changes for night vision so we can get that into your hands. We hope you like the new functionality and that it provides as many tense moments as the legacy version did. So be expecting that to appear. Now let's talk about gore. The way gore is planned to function is to introduce horror elements into the game in a natural way. Nature can be incredibly cruel by human standards and we do not plan to shy away from that fact. The Isle has always been declared a survival horror game, and we plan to show you exactly why. Things are about to get uncomfortable very fast as we intend to emulate the ferocity and despair inherent in the wild. Some of the inhabitants of the island will have the ability to mutilate other animals in various ways, resulting in death. We want to capture the raw and unsettling experience of predation and combat amongst animals, so you feel more urgency when it comes to self-preservation. Not only will you be able to see the flesh being removed from a body, but in certain circumstances, you may be eaten alive as this happens. Exercise caution. A dead body will go through different phases depending on various circumstances. Fresh, eaten, rotten, bones, etc. A fresh body that's been eaten and a rotting body that hasn't been will not only look visually different, but they will function differently as well. Most fresh kills impact carnivores positively, but rotting flesh may be too septic for some carnivores to eat or for some animals to even be around. Further still, bones would only be consumed by a select few. Gore ties in with diets and will come with scent changes. 
dragging bodies to more covered locations will become useful for reducing the amount of scent a body gives off, and the time it takes to give it off, which should provide you with a little more time to eat before your kills are inevitably discovered by other animals. There may be changes to which creatures can smell what, what ranges they can smell them at, and what, and with what impact. If you make a kill or find one, get it to a Get it to cover and eat up as fast as you can before it is found or before the body becomes unpalatable. Time will be of the essence, as a kill will not go unnoticed for long. Compies and taros will rat you out, attracting other predators. The freshness of a body will matter as well as the contents of that body. If you're playing as a creature that doesn't favor certain organs, you may need to remove them to avoid snacking on something that may harm you. Some carnivores may get greater gains from eating certain organs, others may not. This can help to expand the usefulness of the dead on the island as a single corpse can provide food for a myriad of different creatures at different stages of decomposition. Stepping into work on playables, Truidon will be entering testing to make sure its venom isn't too strong or too weak, and that it feels fluid. The venom does not currently rely on application alone or dosage alone. It is not a set it and forget it venom. It's based on exposure. The longer the venom is in this, the bloodstream, the worse the effects become. Building to a crescendo that would allow a murder of Truidon to quickly drop the health of larger prey. But coordination is key for specifically bringing down larger animals, as they only produce so much venom individually. However, a solo Truidon is more than capable of killing creatures within its own size range, but together is where they, the real power lies. The Bipayasaurus, although not intended for Update 6, is getting deeper into production. Several animations were created previously alongside older updates, but they're now starting to see the light of day. We'll showcase some of its current functionality so you'll have an idea of how it works. Despite being ungainly on land, it is very proficient in the water, but no matter where they're found, underestimating them is foolish. They have, been, they have long, sharp claws and know how to use them, so approach with caution. In water, the Dinosuchus can be found anywhere beneath the surface, but the Bipayasaurus will mostly exist in, in transit between the surface and the sediment floor, constantly going back and forth between those two locations for food and air, occasionally leaving the water to supplement the rest of its diet on land. More information to come. Additionally, we have other creatures in various states of production like the Cerrado, Galley, Herrera, etc. that will start showing some production on soon. Another note for Update 6 is our intent to bring the Gen 2s to the live branch, so those of you that want to view the game through the eyes of a human won't have to swap to lonely servers just to get the first person perspective of the game, which also serves to provide us with important information on how to make their gameplay visceral. I think, for fear of making this a novel, I'll stop here. Check out this Raptor which we looked at previously. But that is the dev blog, guys, and yeah, what a novel it was. If you stuck through to the end of this video with me, you are amazing, and I salute you, my friend. Guys, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more IL content. I am so excited. And what was that bit about Gen 2s at the end? Are we getting humans soon? Another note for Update 6 is our intent to bring Gen 2s to the live branch. So update six might be bringing humans also. Oh my goodness, what exciting stuff. Hell yeah, guys. Well, thank you all again for watching and sticking it out to the end of this dev vlog with me. I love you and I appreciate you. We'll catch you next time. I'll see you guys on a live stream. Take it easy. Much love. Peace. All right. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye.